Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Merrick Connell English. Today we're going to be looking at the topic of travelling. Okay, so question number one. Your reasons when choosing a holiday. Climate, tourist facilities, landscape, accommodation, price and any others. Okay, so the factors that influence me when I'm choosing a holiday are generally price. I'm usually looking for the cheapest deal. At the moment, we're planning a holiday to Andorra, maybe a skiing trip, two or three days, and then we might visit my auntie in Toulouse. Climate normally is very important because I think we generally like to go to places where the weather is good. When I go home to London, it can be a bit annoying when it rains every five minutes and then 10 minutes later it's sunny. Tourist facilities, I don't know if that's really important. I reckon if you are going maybe skiing then the facilities are important but if you just go to a city to do some sightseeing I don't know if that's particularly relevant. I guess if we're talking about staying at a hotel then maybe you're interested in I don't know five-star accommodation or three-star accommodation and maybe you're looking for a spa while you're at the hotel maybe those kinds of things are significant for certain people when they're choosing a holiday i think in terms of landscape you need to make a decision quite often before you go because if you're going to another country for example unless you hire a car then it can be quite difficult to get out of the city and explore maybe the the rural landscape or explore some nice sites that aren't monuments and typical things that you would see in a city or if you're going on a road trip then it can be a lot of fun to explore different places and discover nice remote locations. When choosing a holiday in terms of accommodation I think nowadays things are changing and Airbnb is a big player in the game at the moment and they offer very competitive accommodation in, in comparison to hotels. We've used Airbnb quite a few times and we've got some pretty good deals. Travelling alone. Well, this is something that I have no problem with. I've travelled on my own to Berlin to explore the place for a few days and that was a lot of fun. Obviously, it's not as much fun as when you go with friends or with your partner. I mean, I've done a lot of cycling around Europe. Last year, 2015, I cycled to Budapest from Montpellier in France and then I cycled back from Budapest to Barcelona and that was like 30, 40 days of traveling by bike, sleeping in a tent in the middle of the sticks, in the middle of nowhere and that for me is something that I love doing. In 2012 I cycled around Spain and Portugal and I did the Camino de Santiago. I live for those kinds of trips. You know, for me, it's very cathartic. It's an opportunity to just reset my mind and prepare myself for the next year. What can ruin a holiday? I think arguments can ruin a holiday. Often when you go somewhere with other people, very often you want to do different things and that can create quite a bit of conflict. So that's one thing. I think also the weather can be a problem. Being ripped off is definitely something that can ruin your holiday and I think very often when you go to another country you don't know the language you don't know the the tricks of how to get around in the city and the locals sometimes take advantage of that I know when I went to Switzerland when I was cycling back from Budapest Switzerland is a good place to go if you want to lose weight let me put it that way it's ridiculously expensive the food is just ridiculously overpriced. I think it was in the supermarket, it was two euros for one banana. I mean, come on, it's crazy. So yeah, things being overpriced and very expensive can be pretty annoying when you go on holiday. The accommodation, the place where you stay can also ruin your holiday experience. If the accommodation is really bad, cockroaches, dirty, unpleasant staff at the hotel, that can ruin your holiday as well. Number four, low-cost airlines. Well, low-cost airlines have revolutionized the way that we travel nowadays. We've got EasyJet, Ryanair. In Spain, we've got Vueling. Can't really think of any more, but you know, a lot of companies are emerging that offer low cost fares and I mean sometimes you, you can fly to a city in another country for what 20 euros 30 euros return or sometimes maybe it's 10 euros one way and then the return journey is maybe 20 euros but there and back it's a bargain but on the topic of low cost airlines I think sometimes you get what you pay for one of my students told me recently that Ryanair 
ha actually charges you to use the toilet. I think it's like something like one euro, which is ridiculous. I know that a few years ago, the owner was trying to introduce that policy, but correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure, but I think they've introduced it now. And also in terms of space on the plane, I think there is very little space on some low budget airlines. It's a very tight fit. So you're kind of sitting like this in your seat. And I think Ryanair has been very strict with luggage weight in the past as well. I think they have relaxed the rules recently and now you can take a main piece of luggage that you pay for and then you can take a piece of hand luggage that is what probably about that big. A piece of hand luggage that you can take with you into the cabin and maybe a small kind of man bag or handbag if you're a woman and that's a bit easier now for customers, for passengers. Jet lag experiences. I've only had jet lag once and it's pretty intense. Me and a mate went to Australia for a friend's wedding and we were there for just over two weeks. It was a bit of a rush because my friend was getting married and yeah, the jet lag was unbearable. I mean, it's a very strange experience because during the day you want to sleep and then during the night, you know, you're up and awake. So you feel like a, a vampire in a way. And I think we were there for just over two weeks, maybe for half of that, we had jet lag. So it was quite a rough experience and I didn't get to enjoy Australia in the way that I think you should. Because really, if you're going to Australia, you should go for like two or three months, really to experience everything. Number six, home swap and budget accommodation. I've never done a home swap, but I think it would be a very interesting idea if you trust people to stay in your house and use your things. I don't know if I would be particularly comfortable with somebody that I don't know staying in my house for a long period of time, but each to their own. Number seven, rural tourism. Again, this is not something I'm really familiar with, but I think this is something that's becoming quite popular nowadays, like going to the countryside and trying lots of different wines, I'm imagining. It's not really my cup of tea, to be honest. If I do rural tourism, I think it's going to be a road trip and staying at different hotels in different cities and just kind of exploring the environment, to be honest. Number eight, volunteering holidays. Well, again, I've never done this before, but I think for people who do this or people who are interested in doing this, I think it can be a very rewarding experience. I believe a lot of people go to developing countries to help with various projects in those countries. And I think for, for the people who go, it can be a very rewarding and life-changing experience and it can give you a, a different perspective on life and on how we treat our fellow human beings. Number nine, space holidays. Well, at the moment, I think this is still quite a far-fetched idea. Elon Musk springs to mind, the guy who created PayPal and created Tesla cars. He's got a project called SpaceX and they're trying to send rockets into space. Richard Branson of Virgin Records and Virgin Airways, he's also dabbling in that as well. I think even if it does start to happen, is it going to catch on? Who knows? But I think I like to have my feet firmly on the ground and flying is stressful enough with the stuff that you hear on the news nowadays. So I think I'll be passing that offer up to travel into space. I don't think I'm particularly keen on that. I hope that helped you get some ideas for things that you could say in the exam and also check out some of my other videos here and here. Good luck with your exams.